talk about today, uh, it's a lesson that comes from the Ban Sen Shu Kai, okay? Now, this particular lesson is called Joki Jutsu, or the art of projecting no shadow. Or you could just say the art of no shadow, right? Joki no Jutsu, the art of no shadow. With this particular concept in historical ninjutsu, there are six points, okay? And we're gonna go over each one of those six points. So here we go, point number one. The moonlight shines from the outside to inside, while indoor illumination shines from inside to the outside. When you sneak in on a moonlight night, be sure to stay out of the moonlight areas. When the moon is in the eastern sky, avoid walking on the east side. If someone inside a house is watching the outside and tries to detect abnormalities, he will not be able to see into the areas beyond where the firelight shines. This is the same with moonlight. The first thing you guys should write is the moonlight shines from the outside to the inside, meaning the light shines from the moon to the earth. Okay? Light on the inside of a house will shine from the inside to the outside. Okay. So, clearly stay out of the light. But understanding that, if I was, if, if this is a house, right, let's just pretend here's the house. Here's the moon, and the moon is casting light towards this house. If I'm here, the shadow hits me, and now that shadow is going to be seen moving around between me and the house. The house, someone could be looking out of the house, and they see this silhouette and a shadow moving, right? So what it's saying is, you have to be careful of where the light is, because if someone in the house is looking out, they're going to see the light from the moon casting to the earth and the shadow is on this side, right? Just the same, if you are on, if you are someone from behind, now let's paint the same picture. Here's the moon, here's the house, right? But the, let's say that the, the light from the house window is more dominant than the moon. So there's a light coming out of a window, right? And I'm walking the same path. Now my shadow is on this side, so anyone behind me or over here is gonna be able to see that. So you have to be, you have to understand when you look into an area, where is the light? Understanding the light, you understand where the direction of your shadow will be, right? And I can tell you right now, when you look at a lit area, right? Let's think about, we've all been here at night, you know? When you guys see the ground and you see that the moon is lit, it is very, very visible when you see the shadow just walking across an empty patch of grass where there's just moonlight. Like that's very obvious. So this first point is understand that the moonlight shines from the moon to the earth. Know, your, know that and know that the light goes from inside to outside. Know that. If someone from the inside of the house looks out looking for abnormalities, they will not be able to see past the firelight. Have any of you guys ever, like if, I, if we're sitting here and let's say we have a bonfire right over here and it's two in the morning, it's dark. We're not gonna be able to see what's going on behind that light. Once it hits shadow, that shadow is actually darker than the shadows 50 feet into it because it's, the light gives it the contrast and it plays a, 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 a twist on our eyes, right? So that idea, that concept is what he's saying. Understand that the light from the inside of the house goes inside out. But when you're inside and you're looking for abnormalities, they're only going to be able to see to the distance of that light. Meaning you could be on the edge of that light, you could be in those shadows and you're safe. So this concept of, you know, uh, the art of no shadow, understand the moonlight, understand the light coming from into a house out, and understand the light that is being used, like a, a campfire, a bonfire, a whatever, where does that light extend to, and how can you use those shadows to cover your own shadow? So that's point number one. Okay. Point number two, here's the, here's the quote from the Bonsen Chukai. It says, avoid the legs of moonlight or illumination. The basic idea is the same as one above, meaning point one, and it is called Hikari Ashi, or the legs of light. When Fujibayashi is talking about uh, Hikari Ashi. He's talking about the light rays that tend to maybe bleed through the trees, bleed through certain things. Those lights, that light is the same concept as point number one, but you have to be aware of that. That the people could be looking in those points and you could give up your position or cast a shadow because of that. 
right? So that's what he's saying. He's saying uh, avoid the legs of legs of moonlight or illumination. Right. So that's what he's saying. He's saying. You want to make sure that you avoid illumination, avoid the legs of light, you know, or hakari ashi. You know, the points of this understanding is the same as point one. Here we go. Point number three. Do not walk on the windward side, but approach on the leeward side. If you pass or stay on the windward side, the enemy may hear your sounds. You may make or smell your hinoa fuse or other such things. Also, it is hard for you to hear any sound that, make, that the enemy may make or to tell whether they are asleep or not, uh, you are on the windward side. Therefore, positioning yourself on the windward side should be avoided. If you cannot avoid this, but have to walk or stay on the windward side, make sure to not make any sound at all. If you're on the leeward side, you can hear the sounds that the enemy makes, and they cannot hear any sound that you make. Therefore, being on the leeward side has a lot of benefits. This is the castle, right here. I want to infiltrate the castle. The wind is going from here this way. The way, the direction the wind is coming from, that's the windward side. So if I was to, the side that's against the wind is the leeward side. So if I was to attack coming this way to the castle, these people here, the people could smell my scent, they could smell the um, anything I'm carrying, the dogs would catch a smell, Any if I crack on sticks or anything like that, it would be heard, they would catch everything. If I was to infiltrate on this side of the castle, the leeward side, right, the wind is going this way. So the sound is gonna travel this direction. I would want, if I can, I would want to infiltrate on this side of the castle. That way, as I'm coming up, the guard dogs won't hit my smell. They won't catch my smell. They won't hear any, uh, any of the movements that I might make, that sort of thing. And I'm going to be able to hear their conversations much easier, actually much greater, than if I was on the windward side. You would want to be on the leeward side. That way you are disguising your sound, you are disguising your scent, you are going to be able to disguise anything from the guard dogs from that perspective, right? Also, you're hearing conversation. So number three is when you approach, approach on the leeward side, if you can, not the windward side. And in all reality, this is the kind of stuff that you would learn if you were in the military or if you had to infiltrate somewhere or, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it is useful information. If you guys ever, if, if it happens to where, oh shit, the country goes to crap and now we have to start hunting or you have to start tracking or, it's the same concept. You don't want, you can't, you're not going to tra you know, track an animal on the windward side of the goddamn thing. That's why people make posts and sit up in trees and, you know what I mean, or position their body to where the smell don't go... You catch what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it still has a, a benefit to it from a survival perspective, right? All right, we're on point four, right? Here we go. Point number four. When there is no wind, you should avoid brushes or forests beside your house. If there is wind and noises are being made, then the above is acceptable. So, when you are infiltrating, if there's no wind, stay the fuck out of the woods, stay the fuck out of the forest, stay the fuck away from the the, weed, the, the, the leaves and the brambles and the bushes and all that. Stay out of it. Because inevitably you will make a sound that is not natural. Right? If there was a deer running through there or a rabbit or a squirrel, none of those would sound the same. But I promise you this, if you have a person walking through there, that shit ain't going to sound like any one of those animals either. It is very obvious. So my point with it is that when it is no wind, you do not go through those kind of areas. You have to figure out another way. Generally, that would be more of a, you know, you, you get the idea of maybe a yonin, right, where you're in disguise. Maybe you're walking around as a farmer or a merchant trying to peddle, you know, some sort of snake oil on the side of the road to cure cancer or something, right, and that kind of thing. So. Uh, that's kind of what that is, right? But um, yeah, if, but if there is wind, and there's wind today, we can hear the leaves rustling around, we can hear those kind of things. It doesn't ping up curiosity with someone on this side when they already hear so much of the wind going anyway, right? So no wind, maybe point four, y'all might want to write, wind, woods are okay. No wind, stay the fuck out the woods. Point number five. 
Do not go into dry hay or grass or ash close to the enemy. However, if it is after rainfall or when dew is forming late at night, then it will dampen any noise if you venture there. So you can imagine a bunch of like hay, dead dry hay, dead grass. When you walk through it and it's dry, you can see an impression of your foot. But if there's a little bit of moisture on the ground, it's almost like matted. You know, like you go outside when it's rained, even if it's a light rain, all the pine needles and stuff, they're all laying flat. There is none, none of them have a couple of them that are just kind of fidgeting up. Like they're all flat and hanging down because the moisture has weighed all that stuff down a little bit. It makes the ground look, you know what I mean? So it isn't as obvious when a footprint is walking through wet grass or wet straw or whatever as it is when it's dry as shit because then the impressions are very obvious. Yeah, there's moisture, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, yeah, good call. <laughs> <laughs> but when I do, I make sure it's moist. <laughs> I think number six is probably the most, out of everything up to point, I think number six is the most no shit. But you would be surprised at how many people don't think about it. Right? So, number six. Avoid disturbing the surface of water. When you cross over a stagnant water, even if the enemy cannot see you, Ripples will form and the enemy will be suspicious. For this reason, you should cross without causing ripples. So, you have to figure out a way, which there are lots of different ways of <clears throat> movement skills that we've worked on and ways of crossing over water barriers and things like that where you don't make a disturbance, right? That's not for this video, it's for another videos that we've done in the past and maybe, I don't know if I've got it on YouTube or not to be honest with you, but um, what I do know is that even if, like, you know how sometimes, let's paint a picture of a moat, right? Like a moat. So even though the castle's here and you've got a moat, even if the people are on this side, and let's say that there's a, there's a square, the castle's a square and the moat is circular. So if all the guards are on this side and there's a, there's a definitive corner, you infiltrate this side, even if they're over here and they can't see you, if you jump in the fucking water, there's going to be ripples going to go all the way around. They're going to be like, the fuck is that? And then they're going to walk their ass over and they're going to see you doggy paddling across the fucking moat. You know what I mean? You need to make sure is when you do cross, you do not put ripples in the water. Everyone, everyone understands sound. Of course, no sound. But this lesson here, again, we're talking about Joki Jutsu. And Joki Jutsu means the art of no shadow, meaning the art of leaving no trace. You were not there. You left nothing. That's the idea of Joki Jutsu, or no shadow, the art of no shadow. Because when you look at point one and point two, you think, okay, now we're talking about shadows. Right? So your mind is fixated completely on a physical thing, a shadow. I see the shadow, there's a shadow. Oh, the art of no shadow. But then we get to point number three, and point number three didn't have anything to do with a shadow. It had everything to do with your presence because ultimately you cannot have a shadow without having presence. Because point number three was always attack on the leeward side, not the windward side. So that had nothing to do with your shadow. It's not leaving a trace. No one knows you're there. Then it gets us over to point number four. Point number four was not leaving a sound. Don't, if it's windy, okay, you could be in the woods. If it's not windy, Stay the fuck out of the woods. Don't let, don't, there should not be a sound, right? Again, that have nothing to do with a shadow. What, a shadow is just a physical thing. That's something physical that people can see and pick up on that there's someone there. Number five was the, the grass. You don't want to walk on dry grass or dry ash or dry straw or whatever. Why? Because then you're going to leave a footprint. People are going to see that you're there. So figure out a way to not do that. Right? There's always a means of infiltration. There's always a means of escape. Always. When someone say, it's never been done, it can be done. Because if someone made it, there's going to be a weakness. Like Alcatraz, people have got out of that. No one has said it could never happen, and it did. There's always a way in, and there's always a way out. That's what we call in-pole and ton-pole. Right. Point number six, again, that didn't have anything to do with the shadow either. 
Point number six was all about not leaving evidence of your movement, right? So even though point one is talking about direct shadow relation, point number two is talking about indirect shadow location. Point number three is talking about your actual physical location and giving it away because of maybe your smell or something that they can get downwind. Point front number four is going to be sound with the bushes. Five is going to be footprints because of the water that you maybe or the dry grass that you're walking on. But then on point six, it's going to it's talking about um, the the water. So that's going to be a rippling effect of they're over there. Do you catch what I'm saying? So anytime you guys have to infiltrate, those six points is something you need to think about.